Okay, so today I'm working on getting the keel together. Uh, all the associated parts that go with that, with the stem and the breast hook, and all the forms that help you uh, shape the keel and align the frames with it as well. So I'll start putting that together and uh, walk you through what all the parts are. So the first thing then is the keel form. This is made of three sections, the keel form middle, keel form forward and keel form aft. And they just slot together with this dovetail system. Uh, so I'm just gluing that together with PU glue and using some clamps just to hold the boards at a nice height off the bench. Um, so they're nice and easy to work on without getting glue everywhere. Um, this joint will be quite tight fitting anyway off the CNC machine, but uh, just to pull it in nice and firmly, I'm putting some clamps across the main vertical clamps there, just to uh, pull that joint in nice and tight. So the next thing I'm working on then is the forward keel. This is made up of uh, three laminated timbers that just form the slight curve to the forward part of the keel. Uh, this runs from the keel filler block and the step in the keel up to where the stem is. So I'm cutting these slightly oversized at 110. They should be 100 mil wide finished. And then uh, what I'll do is just clean them up after the gluing up stage, cut them back down to size. It just gives me a bit of room for uh, movement between the layers and things. So uh, I'm just finishing these off in the drum sander now. You could also do this in a thicknesser. Um, I just prefer to use a drum sander because it's a bit nicer to the grain, uh, especially when you're working with thin stock. You don't tend to get any tear out with the sander um, and it finishes thin boards quite nicely. So onto the aft keel section now. Um, this is a, a straight piece of timber which needs to be finished to 100mm by 28mm. Um, so what I'm doing here is machining this slightly differently to get a really nice straight piece of stock. Um, so first of all I'm just roughly ripping a piece down. Um, this will be over width so probably around about 110 width, uh, same as the forward keel part. And then I'll finish it down to 100mm um, once we got a bit further down the line. Uh, I'm actually starting with a piece of stock that's 38mm thick, so um, we've got quite a lot of material to take away, but that gives me the benefit of being able to get the piece really flat. Take out any cupping that might have happened in the sawing process or even the drying process after that. So we'll end up with a really straight piece of timber, which is what we want. So I'm just roughly cutting that to length, again slightly oversized just to give me a bit to cut back to afterwards.
And then I'm going to finish this bit of timber slightly differently. So um, the first process is to surface plane the face. Um, what that does is it puts very little pressure on the timber and lets it sit in the position it wants to sit in while just planing um, the first face. So what you find is that the first pass will just take off sort of corners and sides of the stock. Um, if you've got a slight twist in it, you're going to be able to take that out during this stage. You can see there where I turn it over, there's just a patch by my hand where it's uh, missed out and not planed. And that's just where there'll be a slight twist in the uh, sawing of the board. So this process takes that out and gives you a reference face basically that's perfectly flat to start from. If you were to put that through the thicknesser, what tends to happen is the thicknesser will actually just follow the board as it comes through and um, you end up just chasing out curves basically and, and twists in the plank. You don't really get rid of them. So uh, this way gives you a much straighter piece. The next process then is that you put that flat face against the fence on the uh, planer and then you plane the second face at 90 degrees to that. So um, what we'll end up with here are two, two perfectly flat faces at 90 degrees to each other so it's a good starting point for a really straight piece of stock. Uh, the second face then is um, thicknessed. So because we've got a good reference face on the bottom side to work from this can go through the thicknesser and um, that will then give us an even thickness all the way down the length of the timber. And then the second side is cut square on the table saw, again using the face that we edged um, against the fence on the saw to give a nice bit of parallel stock. I'll then just finish that off in the sander just to take out any uh, snipe that you might get from the planer and um, just to avoid any breakout in the final stages of thicknessing. So the next thing I'm on to then is the keel filler block. Um, this is a short section of wood that joins the forward and aft keels together. It creates the step which is at the keel and it creates the right angle between the forward and aft keels and just spaces them properly. It also butts up in between the two frames that are either side of the step. Um, so the same kind of process then we just uh, planing a, a reference face, then cutting it down to width on the table saw, using that face against the fence. And then uh, I'm marking up the taper, so this is just a constantly tapered piece of wood, which is dimensioned in the plans. So I'm just drawing that taper onto the side of the piece. And then uh, roughly cutting that taper on the band saw. This is quite a tricky piece of wood to cut if you've not got a bandsaw. Um, you could do this stage without cutting it and you could use a hand plane or an electric planer or a belt sander and just take it down to the line that way. So um, if you haven't got that kit it is still possible to do it. And then I'm going over to the belt sander and just really slowly working it down to the line making sure that the belt is at 90 degrees to the bed so it's all nice and square. to double check on the measurements. And then we're on to assembly. And then just dry fitting everything in place to make sure it all lines up and everything's correct. So the excess length in the aft keel will just hang out the where the transom would be for now. That can be cut down afterwards that's not a problem then the keel filler block goes in and then you can see the three laminations for the forward keel part and how they overlap the keel filler block and then just bend into place on the forward end
and they also overlap then onto the stem. So there you can see the aft keel and that transitions then into the keel filler block and then the forward keel which is the laminated section. That's still wider than the finished part at the moment because I'll machine that down after it's been glued up. So the next stage then is onto the stem. So I'm machining a bit of wood down for the stem core at the moment. That needs to be 25mm thick piece of stock and then that is sandwiched either side with a piece of plywood. Um, the core is in three pieces and uh, the idea behind that is that you can keep a straight grain orientation all the way throughout the curve. If you were to cut that stem from one solid piece of timber, um, it would have to be very wide to begin with, but also you'd have very weak areas where you effectively had cross grain going across the stem. So uh, doing it this way keeps the grain as straight as possible throughout that uh, continuous curve. And I'm just using the CNC cut plywood edges as uh, markers for setting that out on the timber. The uh, join sections uh, in the core, they don't have any specific areas. They're just sort of illustrated in the plans as guidance, really. And it kind of depends on your timber and how wide it is and um, how you can best fit the pieces on there based on the grain direction. So there's no kind of fast rule on that really. And I just mark the lines for the joins on the plywood pieces that you can see there and then just transfer them through to the solid timber core. So there you can see the three parts of the stem core just laid out on the board. Next then is to just roughly cut those on the bandsaw. So I'm just quite quickly cutting around the outside of them, leaving plenty of material left still outside the pencil lines that I've drawn, just to get me much more usable pieces to work with basically. And once they're cut down, I can then do a slightly closer cut. Again, still outside the pencil line because you really want to work down to the pencil line and uh, not try and cut along it. The idea is to cut just outside the pencil line with the bandsaw and then when we go over to the belt sander, we'll just very slowly work down but always leave that pencil line showing so that you know how far you've gone. The other thing with that wood core is that you really want it to end up slightly bigger than the plywood, again to give you a bit of extra material there for gluing up. So um, after the glue up stage you can clean everything up and do a final sizing on the belt sander and take the two plywood outer faces and the um, timber core all down at the same time. So then I'm just giving these a rough shape on the belt sander just to take them down again just outside the pencil line. And then just a quick check laying those on the plywood outer parts to make sure that everything is looking correct. And then we're on to the glue up stage. So giving everything a good coating with epoxy and just letting that set into the wood before we assemble the parts together. And 
and then I'm just applying some thickened epoxy with some colloidal silica just to bond the parts together. And then I'm not actually going to clamp this, I'm just weighting that down with some blocks of wood. So uh, you don't need a huge amount of force to hold that in place. Um, same thing again with the breast hook here, which fits on top of the stem. That just consists of two components that come from the CNC cut parts. And they just get glued together and are lined up using their outer faces. And then that's just weighted down with a block of wood as well. And using epoxy, that's um, more than enough clamping force. You don't really want to be squeezing them too tight with clamps. So the next day then, we're just taking the blocks off, freeing any parts that might have got a little bit stuck, and just giving everything a sand to bring it back down to size. So this is where you'll notice that the timber core is slightly larger than the plywood outers and it's at this stage that you want to just bring that timber core down so it's the same size as the plywood and use that CNC cut part as your guide. And that should fit into the forward end of the keel form as you can see there. So now we're ready to glue up the forward keel section. So what I'm doing here is just covering the edge of the keel form with masking tape, just to make sure that nothing sticks to it. And uh, I'm also covering the keel filler block with masking tape because um, I don't actually want to glue that to the forward keel at this stage. So we're just stopping any bond from happening there. And the same with the stem as well just to keep these all as separate components at the moment. So the same process then, I'm just coating that with uh, thickened epoxy on both faces of each lamination of the forward keel. And then I'm clamping that in place using the keel form to shape the forward keel. This doesn't need to be clamped very tight at all, just enough to press it down to the form, make sure that it's the right shape. And just pin it in position whilst the epoxy sets. The next morning then, and all the clamps can come back off. And with a bit of luck, the parts that we've masking taped haven't stuck to our keel. And then I'm just cleaning up the edges. So uh, again, I'm using the surface planer just to give me one good face, take all that glue off and then just even up the three layers. Uh, you can do this by hand with a hand plane or belt sander if you don't have a surface planer. And then once we've got that reference face, I'm just running that against the fence on the table saw. And that will just give me a nice parallel straight keel. Uh, so it's at this stage that we rip it down to the final width, which is 100 mil. And then we're ready for the final assembly.
So you can see I've got a bit of extra length on the forward keel there. That just needs trimming down to size. So what you can do is uh, mark that off of the aft end of the keel filler block. Just transfer the lines straight up from the keel filler block and across the bottom face of the forward keel. And then you should have a nice flush fit for the forward keel. Okay, so there we have the full keel assembly. As you can see, that consists of the aft keel, which is just a straight piece of timber. Then you have the section here where the step happens. So you've got the keel filler block, which creates the angle between the forward and aft keels. Then we have the forward keel, which is laminated out of three pieces. And then that joins into the stem, which is three pieces of timber sandwiched by two pieces of ply either side. And then we have the breast hook, which fits onto the top of the stem like that. And that will just receive all of the battens that need to land nicely at the top of the stem. So what you would normally do is glue all of these sections together, um, the stem to the forward keel and the keel filler block and the aft keel all in one piece with the breast hook on the top of the stem as well. Because I'm not actually uh, building this boat completely, I'm just doing the sort of assembly videos to show you how it goes together. Um, I don't want to glue this up, so I'm just going to dry screw that together. And then I should be able to show you how everything else comes together. So that's it for the video on the keel assembly. The next video is going to be going over the strong back and assembly of all the frames, fitting them to the keel and basically doing a dry fit of the complete boat um, ready to go on to the next stage. Okay, so thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.